In this video, we will explain the war's effects on the relationship between Britain and its colonies. Pontiac's Rebellion In 1763, Ottawa leader Pontiac realized that if the French lost the French and Indian War, that it was also not going to be a good thing for the Native Americans, because the British did not have a good relationship with the Native Americans. This lead, he leads Native Americans into rebellion and captures eight British forts in the Ohio River Valley. In response, British officers present, prevented, presented smallpox-infested blankets to Native Americans during peace negotiations. This can actually be classified as germ warfare. You can see in the picture here the effects of smallpox on a human being. The virus spread rapidly among the Native American population, weakening them and forcing them to sign treaties with the British by 1865. Proclamation of 1763. To avoid further conflicts with Native Americans, the British issued the Proclamation of 1763. This proclamation banned settlement west of the Appalachian Mountains and restricted colonial expansion onto newly acquired land. This is the proclamation line that you can see here on the map. The colonists were not supposed to settle on this side of the land in the Indian Reserve. This was impossible to enforce and this is only going to lead to hard feelings with the colonists and future conflicts. Britain and the colonists continue to grow apart. Since the colonists had fought the French and Indian War with the British, they felt that they should receive the rewards of the victory, which means they wanted the newly gained land that was now termed an Indian Reserve. Instead, they got more rules, more law enforcement, and more taxation. Albany Plan of Union Ben Franklin tried to get the colonies to join together in 1754 by presenting what he called the Albany Plan of Union. It's called the Albany Plan of Union because he met with Native Americans and colonists, representatives from the colonies in Albany, New York. The colonies refused to join together, but the idea is still planted. Writs of Assistance In order to stop colonial smuggling, especially in New England, the royal governor in Massachusetts authorized the use of something called writs of assistance. Basically, this allowed British customs agents to search colonial homes, ships, or buildings to see if colonists were smuggling. Merchants in Boston were outraged, and colonists felt that their rights were being invaded. British soldiers in America. British soldiers placed, were placed in the colonies and the British gave the colonists the reason that they were needed to protect the colonists from the Native Americans and from the French. The colonists were very afraid of this turn of events and felt as if they were being put under watch. The British had a huge debt from the French and Indian War. They paid for their wars by taxing the British people. King George appointed a prime minister named George Grenville to figure out how to pay off the British debt from the French and Indian War. George Grenville chose to tax the colonists to help pay for it. So Grenville got Parliament to pass the Sugar Act in 1764. This act have the tax on foreign sugar, it placed duties on some foreign imports, it strengthened enforcement of smuggling cases, and said that if you were caught smuggling, then you would be tried in the royal court. The sugar Act. This act actually lowered the cost of sugar. But the colonists reacted because Britain was placing a direct tax on them, not just passing another trade law. Because of the bad feelings from this act, the American Revolution is going to continue to become closer and is only 11 years away 
at this point.